how to install macOS Catalina fresh, uh, how to do a clean install on your MacBook Pro by using a USB flash drive. Guys, awesome for tuning in. This is, uh, should be the last video in this uh, MacBook Pro tutorial series. I showed this to you here in the side card. Uh, I did a bunch of videos already in this mini tutorial series. First, I upgraded the old MacBook Pro from 2011. Then I did a fresh install there. Then I did a speed comparison with the new stock configuration Mac Pro from 2019. And now lastly, uh, since the Mac OS Catalina just came out, I'm also going to show you how to create a bootable USB flash drive that, which you can use to reinstall the operating system uh, new always from the drive so that has the benefit you only have to if you have several systems uh, it can be useful to download this uh, create a bootable install stick and then you can use it with other systems too because obviously this stick is kind of interesting it has like this dual functionality it seems that you have USB-C on one end and that seems to be USB 3.0. I'm gonna check this out in a second. So why don't we uh, go ahead and jump to part two where I'm gonna create this bootable installer. I think most people, they just uh, go to the app store, download the program and then install the operating system that way. But it can be really handy to have that USB stick. So that's what I'm gonna show you in the second part. And then in the third part, I'm walking you step by step through the installation process. If you have not, never done that before, you can get an impression. And then I'm gonna do a quick summary and conclusion. And then this should conclude uh, finally this uh, mini tutorial series. I showed this to you once again with these videos that I make, or I should rather say made, not make, but made. Guys, awesome for tuning in. Uh, why don't we just get rolling with the USB stick creation? Terrific guys, I switched the camera angle and as you can see here, this is the USB stick. I hope this is in focus. Very interesting, flashy design. I think the color even matches with the MacBook Pro. And on the back right here, you even have some sort of uh, adapter that you can use. And on the front, this small USB type connector. Very nicely made uh, USB stick from Samsung. So let's, uh, let's put this into the side. I'm really wondering whether this fits even because obviously there isn't a lot of space if you look right here at the corner. So it's really a tight match, but it just <laughs> fits exactly. One USB stick and one charging port. Uh, that's about it. So let's uh, quickly show whether this uh, look, whether this shows up in the finder. And guys, I hope the display brightness is not too dark. So first thing that I'm gonna do, go down here to the finder and see whether the Samsung USB stick shows up. Yeah, it shows up. Uh, so that is all definitely a thumbs up. So next thing we need to do is obviously go to the app store, type in Catalina and then download Catalina. And once you have downloaded this, this should show up in your applications folder. And that's what we can use to create a bootable uh, flash drive and if at some point in this tutorial, you're missing something, uh, I'm also gonna link this Apple support article. That's actually quite useful because this article so, uh, describes how to create these bootable installers uh, for every operating system. And it also gives you the command that you can copy and paste right here. So that's actually very useful. But first let's quickly download Catalina. So I'm really curious to see uh, whether that's gonna be better than Mojave. So I'm here gonna hit down because guys, I'm really gotten used to Mojave and that uh, background image. So it's about eight gigabytes. So let's see, it always takes some time to download. So. That's why I'm a proponent of this USB stick. You download it, it's much, much faster. Excellent, the download has finished and guys, it's getting dark outside. I did a short uh, break and it's uh, eight gigabytes. Uh, so it's quite a sizable file. That's what most people know. Uh, usually after downloading it, they just click continue and start the install. But as promised, I want to show you how to create this bootable USB stick that can come in quite handy. So we're not gonna go through the installer right now. But instead, what I uh, tell you to do is you just go to the applications folder and in the applications folder, let's say you click on date modified, then the first thing that should show up is install macOS Catalina. That's what we just downloaded with eight gigabytes. And that's what we're gonna use to create that bootable USB stick. So let's again, sort this by name, go down to the utilities folder. And in the utilities, you have certain system uh, programs that come in quite handy. 
and one of them is the terminal. That's what you're gonna open. And then you just jump over to the support article that I showed you and you copy and paste with command C, the command for Catalina, and then with command V, you can just paste it in. Just make sure when you copy the command, only copy the portion until volumes, because obviously volume is the uh, solid state disk drive, hard disk drive, the data drive that you wanna write the operating system installer on. And if you're not sure about the file path of your USB drive, what you can do, it comes in quite handy. You can always open up disk utility and then one nifty trick, you just show all devices. And then you see, this is the system drive. There's Mojave still on there. And this is the new brand new USB stick. And if you click on it, you see it says volumes, Samsung USB. So that's the file path we want to overwrite with the installer. And that's why the disk utility helps you to look up every file path you don't know already. I know it's called Samsung USB. So I'm just typing SA and then you just hit the tab key and it fills it out for you automatically. How convenient is that? Just hit return, it asks you for the password, and once you confirm that, it will ask you one more time, just to be sure, because we are overriding a drive, we are overriding the USB stick. So you must make sure to put the USB stick in here and not something else, otherwise you may overwrite something else. So please be careful, and I'm just gonna hit yes and hit return, and there it starts the process. And guys, I skipped the process, uh, it just uh, takes a while, so let's just jump over this. Uh, I has to copy the whole eight gigabytes onto this stick and I'm gonna be just back. But basically that's all you have to do. It's really that simple. And if you're still a little bit wary about it and unsure, maybe ask a friend or someone who's handy with this kind of stuff. But this explains it much in detail and you can also refer at any point in time to the support article as well. And guys, it took quite some time to uh, create that bootable flash drive, I was quickly monitoring the uh, write speed and it was only around 30. So not sure whether this is up to the USB stick from Samsung or what. Uh, so uh, be prepared. Maybe it takes a little bit longer than I would have liked to uh, because of the read and write of only 30 MB that I just measured. But nonetheless, it's finished and we can, or I'm gonna call it a day because as you can see, it's dark outside. So I see you again tomorrow in just a second with the whole walk through the installation. And terrific, I'm back, we have a new day. And one uh, important difference that uh, is now happening with these new MacBook Pros, uh, usually what you used to can do in the past, you just uh, push the option key while turning on the MacBook Pro and that would uh, send you straight into the boot manager. But uh, for some reason, Apple has included some security feature features. So by default, booting from the USB stick is disabled. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm just gonna hit Command R and that should send you straight into the recovery mode. So that's what you should do because that way uh, we can access the security tool and quickly change the settings. So that's what I'm gonna show you up next. And once you start it into the recovery mode, you can head up to the utilities and start up security utility. And the default setting uh, previously was full security and disallow booting. Um, I recommend you to switch that back uh, after the installation is finished. But right now I'm gonna try it with these settings. Uh, guys, this is a first for me too, because um, it's my understanding that Apple has included like this T2 security chip uh, in these notebooks to improve uh, security but obviously we are gonna in, right now install it from the USB stick. And if I don't switch that setting, it just will not allow me, it will not let me boot from that uh, installer that we just created. And as I have shown you clearly so far, the process, it's very important, or at least on the newer models, to enable the USB boot. Guys, in the past you didn't need that. It's a new feature with newer models. I didn't know that myself, I just learned it but it's very security conscious of Apple to make it uh, so that you have to push command R, lock in to the recovery mode and enable this USB boot. Uh, obviously it's a change in the past. You didn't need to do this additional step right now. It's important. So you push command R, you lock in as I have just shown you, you click on the security tool and then it will ask you to authenticate with your normal user account. Usually you log into your user account, you just type that user password, you change the security settings, 
And after the install, please remember to switch it back. So that's uh, a change that I just wanted to reiterate once more. Obviously, if you leave that at the office or at the coffee shop or something, uh, maybe the data is secured if you have like some file protection going on, but someone could still plug in a USB stick and then start an operating system from there. And uh, now Apple prevents that, which is actually giving you an additional layer of security. So you want to take, uh, you want to benefit from that by uh, re-enabling it afterwards. Guys, let's continue with the install. Uh, I'm now finally ready. I know it's a little bit of a change, even for me, but uh, let's get rolling. Now that that's out of the way, you can like usually just uh, start the computer and hit the command key and just hold it down and that will uh, send you right into the boot selector. And as you can see, I ended up in this uh, boot selector screen. Uh, usually you have your old operating system right here. I did format the drive already. And here's the USB stick that you can now uh, start from properly. Uh, before, I actually didn't know that I had to enable this USB boot. So I would just see my old Mojave system drive and the USB stick. I would hit start. It would attempt to install it from, start from the USB stick, but then some message would appear and it was all a little bit chaotic. And I actually had to look up to disable the security feature. But right now the USB boot is enabled. So I'm just gonna start from the USB stick and it's gonna take a, a brief moment. And then you end up uh, very usually in this macOS utilities. And here, if you haven't formatted the operating system drive yet, which I uh, just told you that uh, everybody can just download um, obviously macOS Catalina or macOS from the app store and just reinstall the system but to do a real fresh install you obviously want to head into disk utility and format the operating system drive and i always recommend go to view show all devices and this is the internal ssd which i'm just going to hit erase guys it's probably be a little bit bright so let me dim this down a little bit here so that you can read that better and i like to call my system drive mac formatted with APSF, uh, obviously it's a solid state disk drive, so hit erase. And that's actually very quick. And now I have erased the system drive, so it's completely empty and I'm gonna install from the USB stick and it's gonna be like factory new. So for this, I'm just uh, closing this window, go to install macOS and there we are in the Catalina install screen booted from the USB stick. I just quickly confirm everything. And here I see the system drive completely erased. There's nothing on there right now anymore. And here's the USB stick. So I'm going to install onto that drive. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's all there is to it. So once you know, once you know what you're doing, it's pretty easy. But uh, guys, I honestly admit, I didn't know that you had to disable this with the newer generation MacBook Pros. So it was a little bit frustrating even for me at the beginning. So let me uh, run through this installation. I'm going to be right back. And terrific, the in installer from the USB stick copied over all the files. Uh, maybe it took 10 minutes, guys, I have to guess. And then it rebooted once and gives me the assistant to configure this system. Obviously, you pick your country and then language, keyboard layout, and a bunch of other settings, uh, configure your wireless network, create a user account, and so on, connect with iCloud. So I'm gonna click through all that. And then once the system is configured, also very important to boot into the recovery mode again and re-enable the secure or bump up the security feature again so that nobody can boot from the USB stick. So let's quickly run through this. Finally, the installation is complete. It really took me a moment. I had to put in all my uh, iCloud information, uh, enable Apple Pay and all this stuff. So this is kind of private information. I didn't want to show that on screen, but we now have a fresh install of Catalina, like factory new from the USB stick. And the final thing that I recommend you to do is just uh, turn your computer off and then re-enable or bump up the system security again. So for this, we're just gonna shut down the system. And as soon as you uh, shut off the computer, you restart it by pressing the command R key into the recovery mode to access the security utility. And I really have to say, I have booted into the recovery mode. Apple really has uh, beefed up the security quite a bit. I mean, all these things uh, that was not ex existent even before. So 
right now I have to log in with my user account that I just created. So Apple really seems to verify everything that you do. And the result is obviously you have the added security, but installing from a USB stick flash drive and doing a fresh install definitely takes considerably more time and effort because each time you have to do this additional step of entering into recovery mode, enabling the USB boot, do the fresh install and then enter into the recovery mode again and disable the USB boot, USB boot again. So I locked in with my password and now I can go to utilities and bump up the settings hopefully again. And it even asks me a second time for the password, kind of really crazy. And uh, I uh, punched in the password, password once more. And what you want to do is obviously select full security again and uh, disallow booting from external drives. And that way you have in encrypted data on the MacBook itself and nobody can boot from an external drive. So it's really super locked down. And I was able to disallow the booting and uh, bump it up to full security again. I really have to say, I'm really surprised that this has changed so much. I'm really gonna do some catch up reading on this T2 security chip and how this is all managed. Very interesting to see that they are making all these changes. So this concludes the fresh install of Catalina. Guys, I hope it was not too complicated, but I'm convinced you have learned something new. Let's jump to the summary and conclusion. Very good. This concludes the MacBook Pro mini tutorial series. Uh, as you have seen, I upgraded the old 2011 MacBook Pro and put a new memory and an SSD. And uh, then we compared the old upgraded MacBook Pro against the brand new one from 2019 in the stock configuration. And as you have seen the last video that we did, I just installed macOS Catalina and uh, this concludes this mini tutorial series. I think maybe the next thing that I can do is maybe do some accessories, maybe carrying back for the MacBook Pro. That would be kind of interesting. Guys, let me know what else you want to know about this MacBook. Uh, obviously you have seen the installation of macOS Catalina from the USB stick worked a little bit different than on the old MacBook Pro. And that's simply due to the security features that Apple has added. There is one additional step right now required to boot from an external USB drive. Let me quickly show this to you here in the side card once more. And as you can see on the old MacBook Pro, you could just plug in the USB stick and boot from the USB stick. And from the new MacBook Pro, you have to specifically, you have to enable it just uh, as a security measure, which on the one hand, I think is a little bit cumbersome, but on the other hand, I think it's useful for the added security, uh, especially with mobile devices. Guys, this concludes this video. Uh, I'm happy you have tuned in and I see you as a subscriber and in the next video. Let me know what else you wanna know about uh, Apple products. Um, I have a bunch of other useful videos on my channel and uh, let me quickly show this to you here, my channel page. And there you can see I've made a lot of videos already. Also for the, my old Tower MacBook Pro, that might be kind of interesting as a budget solution for video editing. And that's what I'm always using. I have upgraded this with uh, NVMe and a faster graphics card. So that was kind of interesting. But I digress, I see you in the next video and as a subscriber, all the best to you, take care. And because you just watched a MacBook Pro video tutorial, you might also be interested in looking at my old upgraded workstation MacBook Pro, uh, Mac Pro 4.1 and 5.1. These are quite old systems. I think they were produced from 2009 to early 2009 to mid 2012. But if you upgrade them, they work pretty well. And for that, you find a bunch of tutorials on my channel page as well. A lot, of, a lot of people have already subscribed. You can subscribe right now as well. Take care.